Well, good evening. Um, it's a joy for Rahubia and I to be here to talk about the uh, Jurassic Coast trek that I'm really excited to going to be hearing about. Um, welcome from World Vision. We're really thrilled that um, this partnership is happening and that uh, we're looking to fundraise so that um, we can raise some money and uh, do some do some of the incredible work that we do, making transformation transformational change um, with children all across the world. And part of the excitement tonight is that knowing that your fundraising. Um, is going to be doing good things across the world, but also that you can have some fun doing it as well. Um, and that's part of what this adventure is. So I'm going to pass over to uh, our rep from the different travel company, who's going to go through all the details about this particular trek. Um, and there'll be an opportunity to ask questions at the end. Thanks very much. Hi everyone, I'm just going to quickly share my screen and then we can get going. Bear with me a second. Here we go. So thank you very much for tuning in and thanks for, for those of you who are catching up afterwards. Um, we're going to talk about this uh, trek, which is a Jurassic Coast trek, which is taking place on the 17th to the 19th of May next year. Now that might, may seem like it's way, way, way down the line, but it'll be um, upon us before we know it. So let's go straight into it so what exactly is this trek so this is an exclusive fundraising trek so everyone on the trip will be fundraising for the same cause which is world vision um you'll be supporting a, a wonderful charity but also as um jan said having a bit of fun while you do so so the trek itself you'll be walking approximately 26.2 miles and that's along the beautiful southwest coast path from Lulworth all the way to Studland over a long weekend um, and you'll be taking in the cliffs the amazing views over the sea the landscapes best thing about it all the meals accommodation it's all included and you'll be trekking with a bunch of like-minded um, individuals so this vi quick video is going to show you roughly where you will be trekking so you'll start at Lulworth Cove um, it's an incredible site. That's where we start. And then we head all the way to Studland Beach. It's going to change in any second. So we walk all the way down the coast and end at Studland. So the Jurassic Coast is located on the south of England and it was England's first natural world heritage site. It actually stretches 95 kilometres, um, sorry, 95 miles, but we won't be walking the entire stretch. If you just watch the cursor, we'll be starting over here in West Lulworth, walking all the way along the cross to the end at Studland. Um, it's, as I say, it's part of a much longer southwest coast path, um, which is a stunning route. Um, and it's basically a fossil hunter's dream. Lots of dinosaur remains can be found here. It is very picturesque and an incredible um, trip, but also quite challenging as well, as I will talk about as we go on. So the itinerary itself, we set start on the Friday. Um, the Friday night it will be your arrival at our bunkhouse no later than 6 p.m. That will be your chance to meet the rest of the team. We'll have dinner and you'll be um, given a challenge briefing. So the way we're doing this trek is we're kind of staying in the middle. So we'll be trekking from A to B, spending the night. And then we'll be trekking from B to C. Um, so just to move on, on the next day, we will wake up early, have an early breakfast, and then we will travel as a group in a minibus to Lulworth Cove. And then from there, we will walk back to Worth Matravers. So the highlights today include crossing the Lulworth Range. Um, you'll be looking out for ancient fossils as you go along. Please don't pick them up as you go. It is a protected site, but if you're lucky, you may even spot a dolphin or two in the ocean as well. Um, and then we'll hike throughout the day, stopping for a picnic lunch, and then end up at Worth Matravers at the end of the day, where the minibus will be there to pick you up and take you back to the bunkhouse ready for dinner. Um, approximately 14 miles. Um, it we we will 
don't just look at the distance as as gospel we will be trekking the whole day so you will have a walk in the morning a break for lunch and then walking into the afternoon and your meals will be provided um, throughout the weekend so the next day we will transfer back to where we ended yesterday's walk and continue along the path to over to Swan Edge via Dalston Head oh, over the famous old Harry Rocks in the distance and before we reach Studland Bay once we get to the end we'll transfer back to the bunkhouse and that'll be the end of the trek so you're you're welcome to to pick up your bags and um head for home a lot of people who do this tend to to stay on for dinner together afterwards that can be arranged um with the group but um you'd be roughly walking around 12.2 miles um so a well deserved rest at the end of the day on this final day you'll have your breakfast and pack lunch provided and then you'll have to make your own arrangements um for dinner on the way home so it's a nice short weekend but here is just some of the views that you will hopefully be um taking in on your way so this is a picture of um old harry's rock and if you can see my cursor you will be walking along the the cliff along the edge there um, I will be talking a little bit about the terrain that you will cover as we're coming, but these are just a few little snapshots just to show you um, what what you will be trekking through. So what exactly is the terrain like? So it is undulating with lots of uphill and downhill sections. Some of them are quite steep. So this isn't your usual tourist uh, tourist walk um your weekend walk it is a challenge um the route is quite challenging most of it is on good grassy paths or stony trails but i think um don't underestimate the steepness there are a few stretches as well where you will be walking along the road or um as you approach the towns and or areas where there has been some some coastal diversion but you will be accompanied by a local guide who will be showing you the way as you go um some of the ascents are quite gradual and you barely notice them but others can be short sharp so it does really get your your heart and lungs going so it's really important to to train for that um don't just show up without doing any training for the weekend just so you're able to to manage your pace on an incline it's really important that you um you can control that yourself and you're in the peak physical fitness to get there um what really tests some people and i particularly myself struggle with are the descents um it's it's not the worry of slipping but more the discomfort on the knees do bring some hiking poles with you they really help alleviate some of the pressure but just ensuring you have that good core leg and glute strength um really helps with this track so how how tough is it? We grade this was as challenging due to the steep, rugged terrain and the many hours of walking. You are on your legs for quite some time. These pictures don't do justice just to how steep some of the parts are, um, but it is doable for anyone with a reasonable level of fitness. Um, as I said earlier, this isn't a gentle tourist hike. It is a challenging event. So do please take your training seriously. Um, throughout the weekend, you'll be trekking approximately 38 miles and it will take around 15 to 18 hours in total across the weekend. Uh, you need to be in good health before you go with bucket loads of determination. Um, we are doing this as a group. Everyone does look out for each other and support each other. It isn't a race, um, but do take your training very seriously. Um, best thing to do is just get outside and do some hill walking um, just to, to prepare yourself for the types of um, inclines that you will be getting used to. But even just supplementing things with things at the gym, boot camp, that type of thing is always good as well. So where will you be staying? So we'll be staying at Bunkhouse and it is a sim very simple building. Uh, the reason we use this is it's run by a local charity that supports, um, it offers respite care for the children um, 
who come and use the facilities as well. So while the facilities are very basic, you will be helping a, a local cause as well by staying here. Um, so it is bunk rooms of there's various sizes of bunk rooms and our um, group will have full use of the facilities. There's a mess room, lounge area, gardens as well. Parking is available um, but we'll we can share more details with that once you book. So what should you bring with you? So for the challenge itself, you need to be wearing comfortable walking boots, not trainers as they don't offer any ankle support. So and we recommend non-cotton clothing um, just because it's quick drying, a bit more comfortable. And you'll you'll feel a little bit more better when you're on the walk in non-cotton clothing. Cotton tends to absorb sweat, get stinky, wet and smelly very quickly. So avoid it like the plague. Um, you don't need any technical materials. Have a look at what you've got at home. Some people, rather than wearing trekking trousers, will just wear gym leggings, gym top. Um, just make sure you bring layers because the weather can be incremental. Um, we are in the UK after all. You will be responsible for carrying your own lunch during the day, as well as your drinking water, any waterproofs, warm layers, um, sunglasses, first aid kit, your camera, sunscreen, that type of thing as well. So you will need a good um, day pack with a waist strap and a chest um, strap as well, just to help you carry the load through the day um you will be a, a required to bring your own sleeping bag for the trip but bed linen is available to hire from the facilities on request as well um we will provide you with a full kit list with everything you need um with so much detail about everything um once you do book as well and if you have any questions about the type of kit you need we're we're always here to help talk and guide you through that so what will you be eating? So meals are provided as per the itinerary. So essentially it's dinner on the Friday night, breakfast, lunch and dinner on the Saturday. And then on the Sunday, it's breakfast and lunch. Um, we can cater for dietary requirements as long as you let us know in advance. Please just be specific and give us details on your booking form. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you will be required to carry your own packed lunch and water during the day. And then we kind of stop for a picnic lunch um, dur during both Saturday and Sunday. So a few frequently asked questions that I'm going to go through. Communication. There may be intermittent mobile phone reception and possibly some areas will have data services as well, but it shouldn't be relied on. Um, there is wireless broadband internet access at the bunkhouse. Again, it's not very reliable. Um, so it, depend, it does depend on your home network capabilities as well, but there may be sections of the trek where, where you won't get telephone reception so just bear that in mind travel insurance for our uk trips is not compulsory but it is recommended um just be, it just not just for when you're on the trek but in the run-up to say you sign up and something happens and you can no longer go your travel insurance may be able to cover that so different travel is an unregulated introducer of campbell irvin that means they're regulated we're not they're regulated by the financial conduct authority um and we can share that link with you as well um is there an age limit there isn't um minimum age is um 18 16 or 17 if you're accompanied by a parent or guardian but there is no upper age limit we've had people in their 70s and 80s do do our track so don't think age is a barrier for for taking part um, if you do have any medical problems, I'm not medically trained, so I can't actually give you um, any advice on that. But we do say please consult your own GP with your own conditions um, and speak to them if you have any concerns. You do, however, have to declare your medical conditions on your booking forms just so we have all the information necessary should anything happen while you are on the trip. So what's the weather going to be like? Well, as you all know, the weather here in the UK is quite unpredictable and changeable. Um, and 
it is very much not out, not in our control. These two pictures on the left were actually taken on the same day. Um, as you can see, people were a bit wet, and then by the afternoon, it had dried up completely. That's on the Jurassic Coast trek a couple of years ago. Um, typically, for the time of year, temperatures will range between 9 and 17, with average temperatures around 11. On the more exposed sections, it can feel a bit colder just because you, you're by the coast and um, it is exposed and there are strong cold winds. So just be aware of that. Um, as it says there, that there is a possibility that there may be deviations from this, um, but this these numbers are based on historic ad averages. It's just really important to prepare for all types of weather. We will obviously check a little bit closer to the time as well, but this is just to give you an idea of what the climate conditions could be like. So what kind of support do you get? Well, the World Vision team are here to support you from the challenge. It's not just about the trek itself. The journey starts from the moment you book. They will be there to help you with the fundraising side of things and with us at Different Traveller here to, to help you in terms of your kit list and training and that type of thing as well. You will be provided with a kit list, a full trip dossier, training guide, discount vouchers and much more. Um, you will be accompanied for the weekend by some professional local guides as well as a first aid trained Different Travel Tour Manager as well. And then once we're, we're all booked and we've got the team together. You'll be invited to an online pre-departure meeting where we go into the nitty gritty about the logistics of it all as well. And it's a great chance to meet some of your teammates as well. So who's right for this challenge? So this slide is something that I like including just to show that anyone really, there, there shouldn't be anything stopping you from, from signing up. We get a wide range of people of all ages from all backgrounds with different reasons signing up for our challenges um so if you think oh no this isn't for me chances are it, it could be there isn't an ideal candidate for any of our challenges so do you know if you want to support world vision and meet a bunch of people who are, are supporting the same cause it's a perfect opportunity to to get involved so how much does it cost? So you'll be required to pay a registration fee of £90 at the time of booking. Um, that's just to confirm your place on the trip. And then you've got two payment options. So the full sponsorship option, you're asked to fundraise a minimum of £600 for World Vision. The total of that must be paid to the charity by the 23rd of February of 2024 so you've still got a bit of time to fundraise um, and out of that 600 we take a donation for world vision and the trip costs from that for the flexi option you must pay pay your registration fee again and then you pay 250 trip costs and then you fund, you've been asked to fundraise a minimum of 350 for World Vision. Again, the deadline for that is the 23rd of February 2024. Now, those trip costs are based on the final group size and they're subject to change. Basically, the, the more people we have on the group, the cheaper the trip costs go. So if you are keen to sign up, do invite friends along, get more people on board um, and the trip costs will go down for you all um, will inform you of the final trip cost for the flexi option once we've got the the overall group size and we know who is going so what is included in that so what's included is your accommodation at the bunkhouse your meals as i mentioned earlier so you transport between the bunkhouse and the start and finish points so each day um, your UK walking guide, as well as your tour manager. What isn't included is your personal expenses, any drinks that you buy during the day, any extra snacks, etc. cetera. Um, the bunkhouse has limited capacity. So if we manage to fill all the beds, there is an option for some people to camp on the site as well. So if you're camping, the camping equipment, your tents and things aren't included, but you're more than welcome to use the facilities indoors if you wish. Um, the transport to and from the bunkhouse to get down to, to Dorset isn't included either. Neither is travel insurance and any of the trekking kit that you will need. So how can I fundraise 600? I'm going to pass you over to Jan, who will talk a little bit about how how 
you can help reach that that fundraising target. Over to you, Jem. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, really, this is my opportunity to say, and and um, I, I won't go through specifically those figures on the on the slide, but you can have a look at them. But it's a chance to say. Um, it's the best way to do it is to break it down. And as you look at the slide and look at the figures, the idea of running events or um, looking for, for instance, um, a car boot sale where you're selling off things or um, doing something for other people is a really good opportunity to actually promote what World Vision is about, but also to bring some money in. And as we've said, um, the time now between now and um, the end of February, there's Christmas in that in that as well. You might have a birthday. So there's all sorts of different ways um, to, to raise that that money. Um, and if you feel uncomfortable with raising the full amount, then as Rahubia has mentioned, there's the opportunity to split it. So you pay for the cost of the trip um, and then you fundraise the extra bit. We will, when you sign up, we will send you a fundraising pack and also a World Vision um, uh, vest, sports vest, uh, a kind of a technical material like we've talked about, which is the best to be using both on the trip, but also you can use that for your fundraising events as well. And our fundraising officer, Sandra Nwoke, um, she will be there to support you all the way, help you set up a Just Giving page, which you can promote on your social media. Um, that kind of thing. She'll be there to support you all the way. Um, I think that's probably uh, a, a about all that I need to say at the moment. Following um, this, this meeting, we will um, send, I will send more information out, um, but certainly from a fundraising point of view, don't let that put you off making the booking because there are lots of ideas on here and, I, and I'm sure once we get a group together um, we can share ideas amongst ourselves as well. I think there's just a couple more slides which will move you on to thinking about how you go about booking um, and then I'll jump on at the end as well. Cheers for that Jen. Yeah absolutely. Breaking it down into smaller chunks is the easiest way to, to do this. I started as one of you guys as a fundraiser um, before starting at Different Travel. And it just going out there and asking people to help you, just asking five friends to raise 50 quid for your, on your behalf, that's £250 just there. Another thing that I did was Smarty Tubes. There are other tubed chocolates available. If you hand someone a pack of smarties and ask them to give it you back filled with pound coins i think you can get over 20 pound pound coins in a tube of smarties it's incredible uh, the small cost of going out and buying some chocolate and no one's going to say no to chocolate so yeah get out there and as jan says jan is there throughout to help you with that fundraising target so don't have that as a barrier for not signing up so how do you sign up? It's really simple. It's an online booking process. Um, we can share the link with you and you basically just click on the big book now button, fill in all your details and you can pay that registration fee directly online. You can also pay by bank transfer if you wish. All the details are up there. It's fairly self-explanatory once you get there. So we do have a few other trips that World uh, Vision are doing as well that I just wanted to include at the end of here. So just in case one of the others takes your fancy as well. So we've got the Jurassic Coast trek that we've just been talking about. We've also running a Camino de Santiago trek in Spain in October 2024. Um, it's not the whole journey we explore the eighth and final section of the french way but you do enough kilometers to still get your your certificate to say you've done the camino it's really exciting i really want to go out on this one it's on top of my bucket list that one for for next year um as is zambia the canoe adventure it's a little bit different this one so there isn't any trekking involved but you will be taking a canoe down the zambezi for a few days camping along the banks um, it's a great way to to experience Zambia from from its waters. You get pretty up close to to the animals there, um, and it's also an opportunity to to visit some World Vision projects while you're out there, so you can see firsthand the impact that the money you've been fundraising for the cause is is doing out there. 
if you want any other information on any of those trips, um, give Jan a shout and she can send you the link to a similar information evening about these trips as well. So shall I hand back to, to you, Jan? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and, and one thing I did just want to say was if, if you want more information about where your money, where your fundraising is going, um, then do check out our website. Um, and and the, the one of the things that I've found when talking to um, people who I'm, I'm, I'm asking for the fundraising, the best way is for them to see the impact of the work that we're doing. So the, the trip that um, uh, down the Zambezi, where we then go and visit a couple of projects, you will see firsthand the kind of work that we do and the transformational work in children's lives that is is uh, that world vision is all about and there's such a lot of need out there at the moment so um you may be thinking well how how can me doing a trek you know how can me walking a couple of days on the jurassic coast how can i get people to fundraise for me well the biggest i think the biggest incentive the biggest drive is to say you're not actually people you're not asking people to give you money to do to do that you're asking people to give you money that is going to enable world vision to work alongside the communities that are in the world's uh some of the world's most difficult places and we all know those kind of places that are in the news at the moment so um that would be my encouragement to you and i can provide you with all the information um about about that and about what what world vision is about um great i think we'll probably stop recording so that um people can be free to ask any questions um but i will share this recording around thank you very much no problem, I'll just stop the recording.